All right. So can everyone see the presentation? Okay, I hope. We should be seeing Seco's vision, an all-inclusive world, right? Yes. Well, that's, that's really, correct. Excellent. So that really is what we want to talk about today. Uh, some of you have been in close contact with us for some time now. Some of you are just coming on board. And some of you are kind of in between. You know, you've done a little with us. Um, but maybe you're not sure exactly what our goal is or exactly what we've done in the past. Our goal today is to get all of you as members and ambassadors to your communities just caught up to speed on where SECO is, where we've come from, and how we are planning to approach the future months and years. So it says it right here on the title slide. Our vision is an all-inclusive world. No one in any society should be excluded from uh, their peers, their friends, a chance at a good job, a good education because of any physical or mental difference from the popular norms. And of course, we have focused our efforts in Nigeria so far. Uh, Africa is still lagging behind most of the rest of the world in education and in inclusion of special needs individuals, partly due to superstitions that still exist, partly due to uh, just a lack of government participation, and just in general because modern special education just hasn't trickled around the world yet. But SECO wants to go ahead and speed up that spread. So we are, most of you know this by now, a nonprofit foundation created by Ms. Imwetian Okweze and her husband, Patrick, who are both listening in on the call. And we are registered as nonprofit foundations in both Nigeria and the US at this point. Um, <clears throat> our executive team is based here in the US. Uh, most of us are in Las Vegas, Nevada. We have Dr. Stacy Brannon in Texas. We have Mr. Emeka NT in Philadelphia, but uh, mostly operations going on in Vegas and in Lagos. So every summer we've come to Lagos to put on events with the exception of 2020 because of international travel restrictions with the COVID issues. And our operations started primarily in and around Lagos itself. But this past year, we've been lucky enough to have many of you in this call volunteering on ground teams and representing us in multiple Nigerian states. And we've managed to spread around a good amount of the country by now. Um, fair warning, uh, anyone walking in here expecting a six figure salary, we are almost entirely volunteer so far. So most of us are doing this just because we genuinely care not for the sake of, uh, you know, profiting off of this. We are here for our target population. And we've had so many of you already put in time and effort on your own that you didn't have to. And that is exactly the kind of attitude we need because the old saying is it takes a village to raise a child and it really does. And it takes all of us working together to spread the word and spread the support that Zeko needs to. And I'm gonna get Prince Ajayi in here. He's 
okay. had a question for a good few minutes. So <laughs> go ahead, sir. Mr. Ajay? Hello? Hello, can you hear me, Mr. Ajay? Oh, he does not have a microphone connected, it looks like. So, and we really need to make sure that Mr. Jai, because he's the one that needs to give us the ground report regarding yep. Nigeria, on, on Nigeria and uh, Lagos, most especially, what's happening in June. What's coming up? In June? Yep. So, as soon as Mr. Ajay can get his microphone working here, we'll come back to that. Let's see what his question was. For the moment, let's go ahead and uh, we know who we are. Well, what are we doing? Well, most of us are all on the same page here already. We're trying to bring better inclusion, resources, abilities, education to special needs individuals. We're focusing on Lagos for now, but we're trying to spread to more of West Africa. We've had talks about moving into Ghana in the next few years, and who knows where this thing could end up. It will all depend on our success and our efforts on proving ourselves as educators and an organization that can really bring help and then that oh, and then that will lead to uh to success in the future uh prince ajayi i see you have a microphone now <laughs> so prince ajayi if you still have a comment go ahead Hello, Mr. Prince Ajay. You have the floor. Hello? Mr. Prince Ajay, I told you to go to Lagos instead of staying in Korodu to make this call. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we'll move on, okay. unfortunately. Okay. So, <clears throat> Seco's goal is... Um, it's all part of one effort. It's all part of the effort to bring inclusion of all special needs individuals to the forefront. But to do this, we have to hit multiple populations. We need to bring quality modern special education to the special needs children in West Africa. And that was how we were founded because our founder, Ms. Mwetiano Kweze, our uh, curriculum director, Dr. Stacy Brannon, both are special education teachers here in the US. And that has been their career and their focus. And that is a big part moving forward of SECO because when you train the children, when they grow up, they're the adults. So, <laughs> who takes over the next generation, right? So we need to hit modern special education programs, but we also need to hit training and education to adults with disabilities, get them into the workforce, get them practical skills training. And at this point, you know, um, I've been asked to go ahead and say that we here at SECO, we don't like to say disabled uh -uh. persons. We prefer yeah. to say differently abled because that's exactly what it is. People have different skill sets, correct? I mean, we have, we have some people who, we have some people who are very terrible at mathematics, but brilliant artists. Of course, have, yeah. you know, we have some people who are autistic, but can draw the most detailed maps in the world from memory. Everyone has different abilities, and we prefer to use that term. 
just say it. So we've got uh, to provide the training and education to the adults and bring special education to the children so that we can bring empowerment to the disadvantaged populations. And we have not only worked with mental and physical disabilities, but also other marginalized populations right. such as the deaf, the blind, um, the uh, albino community have been great allies in Nigeria to us. And SECO Special Education Collaborative Outreach. We reach out to form collaborations. We try to seek out existing organizations and coordinate their efforts to provide the <laughs> greatest amount of resources and help possible. Because you don't need to create an entire autism center and create an entire <laughs> center for the blind. These places already exist. As long as we can coordinate their efforts to best, to best uh, serve the population, then we'll be in good shape. So, yes, somebody's interfering with the mic. Can you can you mute that particular um, mic? I, I keep I keep muting and it keeps unmuting. Okay. Someone um, keeps hitting me the button <laughs> on me here so i'm gonna do the best i can here but all of our efforts must be planned based on the united nations mandate for inclusion we are not exactly. we are not at seco just spewing hot air here yep. we're not just we're not just talking big we must plan according to uh, best practice strategies, proven strategies for inclusion and live up to the United Nations mandate and bring it to West Africa. And we need to do this in a number of ways. We need to do this by bringing the education to Nigeria and the surrounding nations, we need to bring uh, awareness to the population. We need to fight for government inclu uh, inclusion policies. And we're going to attempt this through a little three-pronged attack here. We're going to try to hit the economic, social, and educational sides of things at once. We're going to require the corporate, private, and government sectors all getting involved mm -hmm. to bring the nation up to the UN standards. So <clears throat> it takes, again, an army of us working diligently and giving what what efforts we can when we can because this is a fairly large endeavor hitting all three of these aspects and also advocating at the government levels as well so we have thankfully many many of you here now with varied skill sets and different members with backgrounds in each of these areas and we're going to be able to start specializing based on our talents and really contributing to the overall growth so just going to touch a little on those three topics there where is seco going with each of these so on the economic side we must reach out to big business. We must convince them of the benefits of corporate social responsibility. They are benefiting from the public. They need to give back to the public. 
And corporate social responsibility is something that has been taking over the business mindset in the United States and Europe so far. A lot of major businesses are trying to give back to their communities, make sure that they're making more uh, eco-friendly products, make sure that they're diversifying their workforces and giving back to charity with financial and time commitments. We need to get the big business in Nigeria on board with the concept. And we need to achieve collaborative partnerships with them, perhaps uh, put in training plans in the near future where people that SECO have uh, gone in and trained and given life skills can put those skills to use in an easy job that needs done, right? We also need to hit the small businesses for more social awareness. It's the big corporations that make all the money and dominate the international scene, but it's the small businesses that are at a local level, operating in every neighborhood, run by families, serving families. We get them on board with taking action towards social awareness within their communities. And we spread the word one person at a time, one family at a time. And it goes far in a hurry, more than most people would think. We are <clears throat> on SECO's side, um, looking to create SECO stores where we will get uh, secondhand products, cast offs. We are currently preparing a cargo container full of uh, linens donated to us. By, we're currently preparing a shipment of linens donated to us by all of the casinos on the Las Vegas Strip very high quality and we hope to turn what? around and sell these items at seco owned and operated second hand stores across nigeria at very very affordable rates ch much cheaper than what people would normally be able to pick up these items for so that we can get high quality items to low income peoples and special needs centers at a low price. And we will also be setting up a division to try to create special needs owned and operated businesses, persons with different abilities or um, the deaf or the blind who can still create art, create uh, beadwork, create sew purses. Um, if any of these individuals want to start up their own endeavors, then SECO will give them the assistance and business education to help them do so. Uh -huh. And again, it's sorry, about- Sorry, sorry Jess. Sorry, yeah. Jeffy. Can I come in? Um, all yeah. like regarding the business you mentioned now, it has already commenced in Lagos. If you know, yep. it's already coming. We, we have um, the, our accountant, Lomo. If you have somebody you know has been proficient in business, doing it for the past 10 years or five years, we, 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 we can give the person minimum of 50,000 and maximum of 100,000. Uh -huh. How are you doing? Under what we call SECO extra small loan. In Nigeria, we call it, in Nigeria government, they have what is called SMEs, small and medium scale enterprises loans. SECO is, is doing something like that, but on a very small scale, on a minute, starting with Lagos. We, we, are, we intend taking it down to Kanu, Benin, and some areas which you have some trusted people and mostly aware too. 
where we have um, somebody like Ima, Mike Wanfo. So, so I think based on that, I just want to emphasize on that before Jesse, you can continue. And also on the curriculum and transition, I think Stacy should have come in a bit so that um, it, will be, it will bring them abreast with what he has done a briefly on the past on curriculum and how we intend yep. to we'll, uh, the speed on we'll terms get, of the curriculum and transition. We'll okay. get to the education in, in two slides. <laughs> Exactly. Okay. Okay. Yep. I'm doing the two slides of the education. Okay. Yep. It's not, it's not most of the people are not quite um, co computer literate like uh, Gosta and a few people in London. Some people calling from Nigeria might not know the slide is going on. So we need to be very, very vocal yep. so that they can understand that I, I need to come in a bit and use my accent. So a few <laughs> of them can actually be on the same platter with what is going on. You know? Absolutely. Okay. So, all so, right. Well, so Pardon him, he's from Ikorodu, he's our main person we need to talk to. Mr. Ajay? Hello, Mr. Ajay? He's he's got a kid with him. He's yeah, gentlemen, pa pardon him. He's, uh, he's, he's yeah. He's, he's, the new phone we 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 intend to give to him is in the container at the moment. So yeah. Uh, so but we will, we will not have this interruption. Ne ne Mr. Ajayi, okay, Jesse, I think you can you can mute him and continue with the meeting, please. Yep. So basically. Pato just covered it. We already have the issue, the ability to provide micro loans and financial assistance to uh, those individuals who are already in business in Nigeria in these areas. Excellent. And the point of all of it. The point of all of this, the point of the big business approach, the small business approach, the SECO assistance, the point of all of this is integration. We want peoples of different skills and abilities integrated into the workforce at all levels rather than excluded from it. And at this point, we've got a couple of questions here. So, Mr. Al Mustafa, go ahead. Okay, I'm here. We have Al Mustafa Kamal. Go ahead. You have your hand raised. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. We're here. Uh, sorry for my long absence. I've been busy for a while. So I just got into the meeting. Oh, no problem. You've missed uh, the introduction, but that's all right. The slide are going okay. to be... Let's give Rita Ophili. Let's give Rita Ophili, who has been following. Let's give Rita yep. Ophili, one has been up. Let's give Rita Ophili the chance now, please. Yep. Go. Go ahead, Rita. Rita. Madam Rita, Ophili. Hello. Hello, Rita. How are you? Uh, I'm nice to hear from you, Rita. Yes, thank you, Mr. Kweze. Mr. Jesse, hi. You are doing a very good job. Thank you. I've been online. I've been following. I'm glad and I'm really joyful to hear that some scale business has started in maximum of 100,000, a minimum exactly. of... Uh, Fifty thousand naira. That's a good one. Rita, if you are in Lagos, we will give you the accountant number by tomorrow. We will give you the accountant number. Okay. Okay. All right. That's fine. Okay. That's good. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Jess. You can speak on. Oh, absolutely. No, we love to get you guys input. You guys are why we do this. You guys are the people on the ground 
in Lagos, in London, doing all this work for us. We're here for you. So. <laughs> and then in Kano, Dr. Okudele needs to give us a brief on Kano. We're regarding to Kano. On the, on the commercial. All right. Hello, Hello doctor. Are you, are you okay, doc? Hello. Hello, Dr. Okudele, yes. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, yes sir. In, in fact, uh, I have to appreciate Seiko for the good lobbying. It is a, a question of trying to liberate the world. So I appreciate Seiko. And here in Kano, Nigeria, we are trying to sensitize because the most important thing is getting to oh, the grassroots me. for them for them to actually know what is happening. We are trying our best to sensitize because the most important thing is getting the stakeholders. Those stakeholders, you know, the churches that can help us Wonderful. towards sensitizing this uh, mission. I appreciate Seko for what they are doing and Seko, Seko, Seko. Thank you very much, we appreciate you. Thank okay. you very much. Ifenna, please. Ifenna, okay, okay. We'll Ifenna, get Ifenna and then we'll move on. Okay, after you can please. Ifenna, please. Go ahead, Ifenna. Thank you, Ifenna. Go ahead, Ifenna. All right, we're not hearing from Afena, so. Okay, you, you can go ahead, but, when the speaker comes on then. Yeah, okay. but Dr. Vincent just hit on it. We need to engage the social community as well. So the first part of our endeavors are economic. The second part is social. We need community outreach. And that is what a lot of you are already starting to provide and Thank you. We applaud your efforts. Yes, we need to get down on the chat. In on the chat, my my neighbor Lisa, who has has taken up the, the whole of furniture with as little as less than the equivalent of Jesse. If we are looking at forty thousand naira, is less than a hundred dollars. Okay. He has been able to take down even Doctor Iwama. So it's as little as you can do within your community. That is the first critical sensitization: is awareness of giving out uh, mask and seco awareness mask, I mean, um, hand sanitizers, before you people will come in on the 5th. We are planning the event to be on the 5th of June. So yep. Yep. We'll we'll that. Yeah. <laughs> do, we, do we understand, do we, can, can we explain a, a briefly what yep. is actually in, uh, big on the curriculum and transition? Because that's where Nigerians really want to know. That's because next. These people, when they are okay, we need to get them back to work. <laughs> so, stay Can you come in for a, br a brief moment for us, please? Sure. And hi, everyone. I'm Dr. Brannon, and nice to see everyone online today. Sorry I couldn't be there um, visually because I'm also working, but uh, real briefly, yes, we are trying to develop a transition program in which we get our students or individuals with disabilities employed or at least contributing to society because we do know once they graduate school or they're done with school a lot of them are left at home sitting on the couch um, really not leading productive lives so our goal for SECO is to ensure that they're living a quality life and businesses and their community is tapping into their abilities to um, give them you know a chance to earn money and to be a part of their community. So we are continually um, developing the curriculum. It is a work in progress as we get to learn all the different needs that are there in the different um, villages and in Lagos and Kano and all the different areas. But yes, that's a little bit about what I do. So I just kind of listen in and pull information and then we just develop. So that's pretty much all, thank you. <laughs> And we see that here on our educational efforts. We're building a regional education and vocation training center in Lagos. It's already been under construction for some time. And once we are up and running out of that headquarters, 
we will have our educational courses for special needs students. We will have our vocational training and hands-on workshops for unskilled adults to yeah. get them skills and get them into the workforce at those business levels that we were just talking about. And Stacy is all over the curriculum for that. She's doing a fantastic job so far with what little free time she has. She's donating it all to SECO. And we are also, this summer, I mentioned a little earlier, we're going to be having a few seminars for training parents and caregivers on best procedures for raising children with special needs, educating them on the different types of special needs and the different uh, types of disabilities, mental disorders, physical handicaps, and how they can best work with such individuals. So that will actually be the first yes, thing. Yes, if I, come in, if I can come in, and that has already started. We are making it a monthly affair, monthly, every month, Wednesday of every month, we, we get all the parents of children living with disability to come to the stadium, what is the Teslim Balogu Stadium, every, every first of every Wednesday or second of every Wednesday. Mr. Jai, when it comes online, Prince Jai, we brief us on how far it has gone because we, we had the first one last month. We had over two to 300 parents, which we catered for, and we, we, that way we know their needs and explain to them that those children we're catering for are actually a blessing to them. They shouldn't ostracize and treat those children as if they are a curse, which is what we Africans, we normally treat people living with different, differently abled people. So such avenue we do every month gives us the opportunity to let those parents know that these children are actually a blessing to them and not a curse. So we have instituted that and that will continue every Wednesday, maybe first or second Wednesday of every, of every month. That has to be determined by Prince Ajay and his um, coordinates because they have about 10 of them coordinating that in Lagos State. So Dr. Udulewama, you can also take the cue and coordinate that in Kanu, just getting the parents of people living with differently able people so that my wife can give them the, the same kind of lectures or the same training we are giving them here in America. You can do that through Zoom or through by focus or through, uh, through instructions, through Mr. Jai or through you, Dr. Okudele. So long as we make sure that all the parents coming in every Wednesday, we take care of them. We give them little palliative, little 2,000. The ones that are bosses cannot take back. We get them some handouts and give them some little things to be OK while they are listening to the lecture to make sure they treat those ones, the people well. Those are the things we, we actually intend to discuss here properly. So anybody that has any role to contribute can actually do that. Why Jesse can take on the meeting. Absolutely. And that, again, feeds back into another aspect. It feeds back into the social right there. Yeah. If we have these awareness campaigns, and we are doing community outreach events, we can make people realize the benefits of differently abled persons to society. They are not a curse. They are capable of different things. They can be put into proper training and come out right. of it ready and willing to join the workforce. And then they can actually benefit the economy and help the businesses grow. And with so many more skilled trained workers in the workforce, the national economy will prosper accordingly. The economic, the social, and the education, they all feed each other. That's why we have to hit all three at once. That's why we're inclusion, diversity, and belonging. And that will also include advocating within the government for enforcement of the inclusion policies they already have, but they have not been following through on emplacement of. And 
once we have all of those in place, once we're advocating on the social, educational, and economic level and getting people in to all of those, each one will start to feed the rest and they will help us grow even faster. And that is where SECO is heading right now. That is our current endeavors. That is our current plan. And that is where all of you come in with your outreach on the ground and your ability to organize and educate the parents and the caregivers. It, it all feeds into that three-part approach. So we'll stop there for now and take any questions we have a couple hands raised here okay. because we have just spent a lot of time we've just spent the last 20 or 30 minutes on where we are and what we need to be doing and what our vision is so we're going to spend a little time next going over where seco came from and what we've already accomplished and if Edna, if Edna stand is up, maybe it's connect you can get if Edna come in and he, let's hear him out if Edna, i'm not showing a microphone oh, if, Edna, oh. if you have a microphone please go ahead no not showing a microphone but yusuf go ahead yusuf yusuf please be very brief please um yeah can you hear me yes we can hear you sir hello greetings everyone uh, my name is Yusuf. yeah my name is Yusuf Iodo. i'm a lawyer by training and um, most recently i am the technical assistant to the deputy secretary on the newly established um disability commission in Nigeria. i'm based here in abuja Fantastic. I've been contacted to be an ambassador of yours, um, particularly um, in Abuja here. Okay. Um, and I'm glad um, to be part of what you're doing. I've heard now uh, your, the various dimensions to which you operate. I mean, okay. it's, it's, it's so good uh, and great that you're making this impact. Um, uh, just to say that uh, to, to register my. Um, appreciation uh, and that uh, whatever it is that uh, you can contribute to support and to scalate what you're doing, I will be very much um, involved. Uh, once again, thank you very much for what you do and for the opportunity afforded um, me to be part of what you do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome to the family. Um, please, um, Yusuf, if, we, uh, if I may ask, um, who um, brought you to the family, or who introduced you to the family? Hello? Yeah, I was introduced by um, Mr. Prince. Mr. Prince Ajayi introduced me. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Excellent. Thank you so much. Oh, excellent. We have been waiting to, for, for Prince Ajayi to update us on the Lagos status, because yeah. he has done so much over the weekend, between Thursday, Tuesday, Thursday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday, you know. So if um, if you have been speaking with him, I think you should be aware that um, what he has been, you know, going through regarding the Adeyemi Bero Hall. So that's why I wanted him to come online and actually brief the house because he's been doing a lot. So thank you so much. You've been in contact with Prince Ajay. I hope he comes online and so he can brief the house before we, we, we close. So Jesse, you can you can take and thank you, Yusuf, once more. Ab absolutely. And so, Seco, you know where we're at now. We, yeah. You know where you guys come in. We just wanted to give you a little background for those of you who are fairly new. Most of the people in this meeting have only been helping us in our efforts for hold on there we go most of us in most of you in this meeting have only been helping us for a short time have only within the past year or less been introduced to the seco family so just uh, a quick little 
background here on what we've done before. SECO was founded on the principles of empathy, not sympathy. We don't want to feel sorry for people who don't have a good life. We want to empathize with them. We want to feel what they feel, work alongside them, and help them rise to where they need to be. We want, we want to do that through empowerment, not handouts. There's an old saying, teach a man to uh, give a man a fish, he will eat for a day. Teach the man to fish, he will eat for his lifetime. If we simply give money and resources to special needs communities, it will be used up. But if we teach, if we spend our efforts teaching them how to empower themselves, educating them to train them, to bring them up to a better place in society, they will be set for the rest of their lives. And we as volunteers need to duplicate the best of oh, some horn honking here, sorry. We are all about duplicating the best of ourselves in others. We want to take all of our passion and spread it to the rest of the community and help them see what we see in the potential of these individuals. So that is still the SECO model and it always will be. Empathy, not sympathy empowerment not handouts duplicating the best of ourselves in others and we began as i said focused mostly on special education because of how many of us are special educators here in the united states our original mission statement was to inspire lifelong learning support families equip educators and appropriately develop and design evidence-based practices for students with disabilities. Now, what have we done with that? Well, we have taken it and simply adapted that mindset to everyone with disadvantages instead of simply children and students. Yes. We still strive to inspire lifelong learning. We are still providing support and equipment for family and educators. We are still focused on best practice strategies, US and European training that has been proven to meet the UN mandate. And with that in mind, these are some of the original objectives in our founding documents that have not changed today. Yes. We need to, at the bottom here, promote a fresh and relevant concept of achievement that can be applied to differently abled persons. We can't measure their success and progress by the actions and measurements that we hold the rest of society up to. We must do it to their own measures of success. We need a relevant new concept of achievement. And when we do that, we will be able to focus on the individuality of everyone and recognition of their unique successes. Yes. Once we recognize those unique individual successes and abilities, we can provide the curriculum support resources and training tailored to their abilities to be able to develop their full potential. And on the training side, in order to develop the full potential of these individuals, we're going to have to inspire real changes in teacher training as relates to special needs individuals 
and train educators and caregivers of those persons with disabilities. And once they have been trained and they have seen this, it will give them a fresh idea of what these individuals are capable of and the cycle will begin again. And smack in the middle there is the purpose of this entire cycle of efforts to show all persons with disabilities, how to develop their own intrinsic abilities and reach their full potentials as human beings. And that is really what SECO was founded on and what it still focuses on and what our end goal is. All persons with disabilities in this world to be able to reach their full true potentials. Any questions so far from anybody, Jesse? We don't have any raised hands, but if anyone would like to ask a question at this point, it's a good spot to do it. Because I saw um, Egon, um, not uh, Chuma, Egon who raised up his hand before, and um, if and now, okay, okay. If they can see, if any of you they can come on and ask a question, then while we proceed. Yeah, go ahead, Chuma Egono. Oh, thank you very much. Um, good day, all. Glad to be here once more. Um, my question is um, considering the fact that I'm uh, domiciled and uh, my area of operation is in the eastern part of the country, Nigeria. Um, can can we be brought up to speed on uh, the efforts of a SECO in the Southeast, particularly Enugu and Anambra states, and um, where and where one can be of uh, assistance and uh, help to move us forward to the next uh, level of the vision for SECO? Thank you. Yes, Pato, where are we in the Southwest or Southeast right now? Okay. Say it again. I didn't quite get that. Uh, Patrick, Patrick needs to come back to his phone. <laughs> oh, Patrick, okay. I was connected to somebody already. So, Chuma, what you asked is very, very relevant. You know, I didn't want to, you are the major person in the East, and you know your bereavement was within the time we are putting up a lot of uh, situations together in Lagos, okay? That's correct, Pat. That's yeah. very correct. We will surely bring um, Southeast up to that speed. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Okay. Liwama already working on Southeast. Uh, and we have Amaka Okere is in Asaba, which is close to Southeast, okay? And uh, uh -huh. once you get done, by next month, or within the, by the end of the month, we should establish the, uh, that SSE, okay? We should establish the okay. SSE, yeah. I know we're moving to Benin City very soon as well. So uh -huh, nice. I don't know. I don't know how close that is to your area, but I know it's not southeast. quite close. Not quite close, but I, um, we can always. Uh, I know it's southeast of Lagos. That's, uh, that's, my uh, geography of Nigeria isn't perfect yet. So, <laughs> but I know we are moving well, to the east of Lagos. Don't worry. I, I know Easterners are very robust when it gets to the east, most especially the uh, commercial end of Seko which uh, I know the Easterners are going to be very interested in. The stores are, first of all, coming up in Lagos and Kanu, which uh, Dr. Uliwama has been able to get some. But I know when we are done with Kanu and Lagos, Eastern, I mean, towards Onicha, Benin and uh, Okainugu will all be involved because we have a lot of containers coming in. When we are done with this, this container, we are clearing now. Jesse, you know, we have about two or three Container yep. loads already waiting to go. Yep. <laughs> so it's, just, it's waiting to go. So the logistics is what we are. We just we're ensuring that we are not shortfall in logistics in Nigeria. And we have people like uh, Egon Wafo, my, um Emmanuel. We are all working on get, making sure that the logistics from Nigerian end is not in, in doubt because he made sure that I assured him that in Vegas here concerning the networking and getting the items. Jesse, you can testify to that, that we have, how many, how many oh, we have, we have, we, over, we we have, have cleared out, uh, we have cleared out three um, hello. higher storage garages. Please, I think I can come in into the question. Yeah, 
uh, about the southeast. Mm -hmm. There was a question. There was a question from uh, my brother Egon about the southeast. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, in as much as I am in Kanu, southeast happens to be my place. I'm from the southeast. And uh, in answer to this question from my brother Egon, when I went to Oaru, I actually did some sensitization. And mm -hmm. that sensitization was happening in the southeast. The southeast, which is Oaru in particular, when I lost my in law, I did a very strong sensitization. Not only uh, Oaru, I think it's very really important because we have a yeah, brother uh, who is a who is equally doing a very good sensitization. Yes. So I think that the uh, Southeast is very strongly on the line. All I appeal to my brother is to just do uh, have and make sure that the issue of Southeast is actually good. Because I am sure that it's needed in Southeast is very strong boost. And with a very strong personality like uh, Southeast would really go a long way. In terms of their commercial base, the network in there will be very, very strong. And people are really accepting that. In fact, I got a very strong reception about Seiko from Baru. And I think uh, a whole lot of things are actually going on there. All we need to do there is to plan it very well. Like the nation, people will really impact. I think that is what I have for now. Thank you very much, Jesse. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, That's Dr. Wawan. Thank you so much. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Looks like we have more. The network is from Tanu. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. It was a bit uh, muffled. I think there was a glitch somewhere. Looks like we have one more question from Rita, and then we'll move on okay, to our next question. Okay, okay. For, okay. Rita, please, can we give you Fenna the floor after then you can come in? Okay, sir. That's fine. It's okay. If Fenna, you can come in, please. If Fenna, okay. Yeah, good, e good evening, all. Good evening. Yes, uh, my question relates to uh, medication. Because I have I've heard a lot about equipment and other things that will be brought down. Very good, uh, very good, very but uh, from my uh, hello, mm -hmm. yeah, from my own experience, having been a victim recently myself, I know that one of the challenges a lot of people have is procuring relevant medication that will be that uh, they would need. So, are there any plans on ground for Circle to involve get, get involved in bringing in this medication? Of course. Your medication is already on the way. Your own medication. We have medication with uh, Honorable Chris Opportunity from all the people, any SECO member that has any situation. We bring in multivitamins. The, the particular medication, the set was seized at the airport, Heathrow Airport. But next time, we will fly it directly to Nigeria. But your medication is on the way. We have it in the container. We have a lot of medication, even glasses for the people that are fairly partially blind, partially or fairly, fairly, we don't call them partially blind, we call them, we give them fairly impaired, impaired, okay? We have good medication for them. We have glasses for them. We have all encompassing things in the container. You can be rest assured of that, okay? It's on our top priority, the medication. It's on our top priority. And we are working with the customs to make sure that we get it as fast as possible because those are the very, very essential because health to us is very is well in Seco. Okay. Okay. Okay, Rita, you can have the floor now, please, for just two minutes, please, Rita. Okay. A circle for two years through Mr. Moses, who invited me as one of the ambassador and one of the models in Nigeria. Fantastic. For the fact that circle has been in Lagos, I'm not aware that they've started and they've uh, commenced work. I'm not aware as an ambassador. I don't know anything 
taking place. I don't know my job as an ambassador. It means like I'm just there. So when it comes for the program coming in June or July, that's when I'm being invited and that's when I come. But I don't. Okay. So let's take it one at a time. Are you in the Seco? Are you in Seco Global Resources? Are you, are you in Seco Dera Group? You are there, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, at some point, you came in online, and we brought. We just we are introducing a lot of things, and we are coming in. We the only year if we did not make it was this year. If we had come in this COVID year, we would have, we would have been getting everybody involved. We are making it one of the time. Okay. Um, you just brought the issue of uh, our second loan, which we are going to handle on our own part with the people. So everybody will be involved, uh, Rita. Okay. Rita. Okay. Okay, Prince Ajay, you can come in, you can come online, please, Ajay. Please, we'll be waiting for you, Ajay. Hello, Mr. Ajay. Okay, let us give Kemi Odusoya. Kemi Odusoya, please, you can come online, Kemi. Okay, good evening, everyone. Can you hear me? Perfectly. Okay, so my name is um, Kemi Odusoya, and I was just wondering, for the very first time that I joined this call, okay, to start off with, I was invited in here by Mr. Hajai, and severally I've sent a chat on this group chat, and I'm wondering, um, is it a means or a method of protocol that you perhaps don't check chats and maybe it's a later segment because you've been um, calling Prince Jai and I've dropped a message regarding that on the chat because I didn't want to interrupt um, the conversation. So I called him because I noticed that he was on call. He, we could hear him, but we, he can't hear us. So I had to call him and he said that he could not hear what you were saying, but if it's possible for you to do a recorded um, I mean, for you to send a recorded link for him to listen to afterwards. So that's yes. one. Two, um, I asked a several question on the group chat. I, as much as I just joined, I'm just joining here for the first time. I got to know about Seco, uh, I think on Nigeria Info, and I tried so hard to get contact information of you guys, but it wasn't fruitful. And I was like, okay, are you guys on social media? Do you guys have an online presence? If I told there is um, something or what, whatever I want to know about Seco, we can easily get that. That's, that's two. Then three, um, talking about your different programs, uh, talking about the SSE, talking about the medications and what have you. And I'm like, okay, just I just wanted to support. Um, Madam Rita said what I wanted to ask of because even without joining or without coming in yet for the very first time. I don't think I've ever had anyone, I'm a person with visual impairment, and I don't think I've ever had mm. anyone mention about circle at least in my community, or even do, I do, do with persons with disabilities. Do you know Mr. Dan, 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 Dan? Um, what do you say? Do you know Mr. Dan? That is what I'm saying. Dan do you know Adiola, do you know Adiola of School of the Blind? Um, I don't think I know that. Okay, you see, we, we cannot reach everybody. Those two people I mentioned to you, Adiola is the head of the, as at some point, School of the Blind in Lagos, okay? And Dan Oti is a uh, people that handles people with, with uh, sight impairment. That's why we put in glasses in our next shipment coming in at the, is at the wharf. Is at wait, the... wait, sorry, I, I need to get something clear. You said Dan Oti handles now. Is he gonna, is he handling it based on circle or that is? Um, no, 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 no. What, what we do is, okay. what we do is, like you now, now you're on this committee now, you come on board, okay? Our, our online base has been a bit back and forth because of integration. We just discussed it before you came online, okay? That's why you couldn't get us on, on Nigeria Info all this while, briefly. But although we cannot handle everybody at the same time, that's why sometimes we call this general group to come in. But going forward, in order to, like you said, the, the, it's going to be recorded. Prince Ajay will play everything for you, and then going forward, you can, you can, you can, you can also contribute and talk to Ajay. Um, what's, what's the name? I mentioned two names. Dan, Dan, no, Dan, 
is quite busy on activism. We are more of a solution advocate. Okay. Now you have brought a solution. We, we, you work with us to handle the solution. Okay. Yeah, um, I can hear you very well. Um, I, I choose not to, I don't know, but let's go on with the conversation. The reason being that you mentioned the statement right now, and I'm wondering, the okay. foundation of SECO, does yeah. it have to do with person with disability? Now, what I mean is, maybe part of the management board, do you have a person with disability yeah. in there? Because I'm looking at the in-depth understanding about disability and how it means. Now, you mentioned a statement which I would like to correct right now so that you won't um, perhaps mention it later. And you said, um, uh, what's his name? Um, Ajayi would play the audio for me. I found that that, very, that was the reason why I asked if you have, to an extent, a person with disability in your circle. Because, because I'm a visually impaired person doesn't mean I'm, I'm sorry. not I'm understanding very sorry. I'm very sorry. what you're I'm saying. My, my wife would have been able to handle you properly because she's the one. I just I just I just came in for her and Jesse. I think Jesse can and take this question for you properly. I was answering. All right. Yes, Jesse can take it for you. I'm not. Jesse is. They are the people handling that. Okay. Uh, so so if I understand your question is, do we have anyone with disabilities on Seco? Yeah. Um, we have. On our actual board, no. We have special educators in the United States. We have Tian and Stacy are special educators as a career. They've worked with uh, children kindergarten through the end of secondary school. And they every day are at the forefront of curriculum development for special education students. And I have a background in private education and I go into homes and work one-on-one -on -one with special needs students. And <clears throat> we have a number of people that we work very closely with in other organizations who some of them have special needs themselves and some of them have special needs children mm -hmm. and that was what led them to get involved and we do have special needs individuals themselves special needs parents and special needs teachers no need to go on, too far on, on our Mr. yeah Mr. on our Mr. Jai and her daughter you will ask Mr. Jai Seiko's role in her daughter's life. Yeah. Um, what's your name again? Sorry, madam. What's your name again? Sorry. Kemi. Kemi, Kemi, K E M. -E. Kemi, Kemi Odusonya, right? Yes. Kemi Odusonya, please, eh, for us to be to cut it short, ask Mr. Jai uh, Seiko's role in her daughter's life. Okay. All right. It's fine. No problem. Thank you. Yep. Okay. And uh, so as, the next, the next as, question, the next question is. Uh, we're gonna we hear for, you for a minute no for the for the sake of uh for the sake of time here okay. uh, there's there was there was time allocated at the end for most of these questions uh we've kind of spent most of it already so let's just get through with the rest of our information and then we'll go ahead and hear everyone out at the end. But, but Mr. Jai should be giving just one minute. She, he's raising up his hand. I don't know if he can connect for a minute, Mr. Jai, Prince Ajayi. Kimmy just said Prince Ajayi was having trouble hearing us and speaking to us. Okay, Prince Ajayi, can you hear us, Mr. Ajayi? I guess the best way to solve Mr. Jai's um, issue is if you can do a video and kind of like a sign, do like a symbol, because I think he can see you, but he can't hear you. I've been, so I've if you can do that. I've been, I've been waving at it with him, but he's not even seeing Yeah, him. so I guess he can't just I join us. Bimbe, Maybe Bimbe, just can you tell me? Bimbe, can you see me? Bimbe Shadari. And if people if, if can see me waving, that means everybody see me waving. So let us go on with the meeting. Uh, with okay. All right. Go on with. The so Sorry. the the last section here is pretty quick. So we just want you guys to get a look at some of the 
big events we've already been involved with and directed to give you an effort of things that are coming up. So we have been behind the scenes for more than a dozen events and dozens more charity efforts, and we've headlined and sponsored a few. So we just want to show you some of the biggest real quick. So the Bead God Fashion Show is supposed to be annual, but was derailed last summer, and we don't know when we're going to be resuming it. But the idea was Seco sponsored it, and our friend the Bead God arranged and hosted, and we had Nigerian celebrities, singers, actors, retired football stars, uh, pageant winners come and speak and interact with special needs individuals. We gave the special needs community a chance to showcase themselves on stage. We had a runway walk with uh, autistic individuals, albino individuals, cerebral palsy kids in wheelchairs, and they got a chance to dress up in fashionable outfits and strut their stuff, show off that, hey, you know, we are beautiful individuals too, and give them a real self-confidence boost getting to perform or walk the runway in front of approximately 500 audience members, including photographers, television networks, and we had children and adults with autism, Down syndrome, albinism, cerebral palsy, orphans, and more. Um, we had a blind choir perform on stage and they were oh. so good it was beautiful music and oh. this was just a chance for us to showcase that these people are extremely talented just in different ways than society usually thinks and it was a huge success we had coverage by three national television networks in nigeria of the 2019 edition and we hope to have a chance to do similar events in the future once COVID restrictions are lifted. We put on a women's retreat in December 2018 completely hosted and paid for by SECO where women and teenage girls with special needs and different abilities were taught living skills cooking, cleaning, basic employment skills, arts and crafts, sewing, so that they could hopefully get out and start finding jobs or earning a living in the, uh, in the professional fields as, as cooks or housekeepers or seamstresses. And we had huge success with this event. And many of these women went on to, uh, to find gainful employment. And in the spring of 2019, we had a team that SECO sponsored, provided the vehicles, provided the materials. And this team went around over 20 rural communities in over six states and worked with the blind, orphanages, special needs centers, autism centers, a technical school for girls, and taught them artwork, painting, crafting, um, sculpting, and even such things as how to take the trash from their streets and alleys, empty, dirty bottles, clean them up, and with just a little bit of supplies, turn them into beautiful artwork. And much of that artwork was on display at the summer 2019 fashion show event. And it was phenomenal. 
to say the least. Um, then COVID hit, obviously, at late 2019, early 2020, derailed many of our plans to put on massive events, but that just gave us another avenue to help our at-risk populations. In the early days of the lockdowns, when it was difficult to distribute resources to rural communities and shipping routes were being cut off and shut down and people in the furthest villages were starving, SECO organized and purchased over, uh, I think a few hundred, Patrick might know specific numbers, bags of rice. How many bags of rice did we distribute, Pato? It's about 500 to about 1,000 bags, both in Lagos and down the far, further down east. Okay, bought in Lagos and further down east, oh, almost a 1,000 bags of rice delivered to communities that were starving because their trade routes had been cut off. And our own individuals, Prince Ajayi included, braved the quarantine to get out there and get those supplies distributed. In the past and four months, in the past, oh yes. And in the past four months, we've been distributing Seco reusable washable face masks that you can see on screen. And, and we. Oh, guys, thank you. Popcorn. They gave us popcorn. Yeah. Popcorn. Sorry. Go ahead. Is, a, is the president interrupting? Hello? 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 Oh, was I muted? Oh, yeah, you are muted. Yeah, go oh, ahead. Oh, sorry. Go. Sorry. I was going to say, uh, I heard Tian come in for a second and talk about popcorn. Um, <laughs> so, Tian is uh, at an event with one of our partner organizations here, the Best Buddies Friendship Walk and that's why she couldn't be here with us today. They do walks and marches for awareness with special needs individuals to raise awareness around the Las Vegas community. And they partner with us on occasion and Tian is representing SECO, marching with her SECO t-shirt and banner to bring more attention to our cause locally today. That's so, why I took a seat. That's why that's why Pato stole her uh, stole her seat because she's out there even even when we're training here she's out there networking and representing and getting us even more support. So the uh, the most recent events while we've still been under COVID restrictions we've distributed. You want to see me? We've distributed thousands of masks. To, uh, to rural areas in Nigeria, reusable, washable, and we have purchased three buses with handicap wheelchair ramps, and they went on the first container. They're already sitting in Lagos, and we are going to, we are getting them cleaned up right now. They're being repainted over the past two weeks. And we will have our own wheelchair accessible buses to shuttle special needs individuals from their centers to our events each summer and fall. So SECO is trying to ease the burden on those uh, centers and schools and orphanages by being able to even provide 
our own transportation for them to our events. And hopefully that will allow us to get even more people into the cities for these seminars. And that mess, that mess on the bottom corner there was Patrick and Tian's garage when we were doing our mobility drive. So we're focusing on one major uh, acquisitions, <laughs> one major line of acquisitions each, uh, each season. And fall of 2020, we were focusing very largely on mobility devices, walkers, crutches, canes, wheelchairs, motorized uh, wheelchairs, and we filled two thirds uh, of uh, adult commodes. Yep, we filled two thirds of a shipping container with them, and they are in Lagos now. So we will be distributing those this summer when we arrive in about five weeks and getting those to centers in need. And now we're on a big drive this spring for linens and they will be coming hopefully this summer. And when we decide on whatever our fall event uh, focus is going to be for this year, then we'll get on that as well. <laughs> but um now we know where Seco has been. We know what we're doing right now. And we know where we're going. And hopefully you all have a little better idea of the vision here. And the idea that most of us are volunteers. We're doing this out of passion for our fellow human beings. And we're trying to spread that love by spreading awareness through showing what special needs individuals are capable of and focusing on the economic, social, and educational sides of things. We now have a few of our members in government positions. We will be working very hard on that. And we know where we are and where we've come from, but nobody can ever know what the future holds, right? Yeah. But that is not stopping us from planning. We are absolutely planning on the next few years worth of activities and events. We have ambitions to go far beyond our first training center and headquarters in Lagos that's nearing completion and put a few of them around other major cities in the country in the next five to 10 years. Eventually, we want to bring modern special education and equal rights and empowerment for all differently abled persons in West Africa and lay the groundwork and light the spark for inclusion to grow worldwide. And we've got amazing people already working with us. Some of us have been putting 20 to 30 hours per week of our time into this for the last three years. Some of us are new. Some of us have gotten out on the roads in rural Nigeria. And some of us have done most of our work from the States or London or Ireland but we are all in this together and this organization South Africa. this organization is going to go as far as it can based on the efforts of everyone here today and we thank you so much yeah. for being here today and at this point we'll wrap up with our last few uh comments questions and uh any vital information that any of our people have to share. So I'll let Patrick take over. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Jesse. I really appreciate you and all of us appreciate you. Um, at this point, you practically said it all. <laughs> I would like uh, Prince Ajayi, if Ajayi can come in for a minute, because it's very, very important to whatever I'm doing. 
Mr. Prince Ajayi, can you hear us now? Um, gentlemen, Ajayi is still having a prob problem, but yes. it's a good thing that everything is recorded and um, yep. Ajayi is very good at recording, so he will listen to everything. We yeah, just he, heard, and then he, he just messaged that he's having network problems. He's not going to be able to speak. So okay. we have... Um, we have Adabimpe Sharare wants to speak with us uh, about the area at Sango, Ota Ogun State. So, do we have okay. anything going on there? Go, go ahead, Adabimpe. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Hello, good evening. Good evening, Prince. Yes, it's me, sir. As Jai that invited me. And I was very, very happy with the SICO. In my area, we have a, we have an organization for the parents that have special children at Songo. Fantastic. And we are trying to move awesome. to Abel Kuta, Ijebu, and also just to be all the part of Ogun State. But now in, in Songo here, there are many children with disability. There is no school for them. The private school that we see is too costly for us, like 150,000. You know what Nigeria is saying now? For okay. the person that have so three children. So we need education in our area. And okay. miss no. we, have, we have discussed that with, Ajay, with Prince Ajay already. Uh, that's All why right, if sir. Prince Ajay had come on board, we are establishing a school just close there that will accommodate. We already Thank have you. a lot of things in the container. Yes, yes. That we and we have, that uh, can the if I may, Pato, we do have... Go ahead, um, we do have a project in the works. We do not have the funding and resources yet to put it in place, but we do have a project being planned where within the next year or two, we hope to be able to start visiting areas exactly like yours. We hope to start being able to identify towns and villages across multiple states that don't mm -hmm. have educational facilities. And we hope to be able to come in and build classrooms and outfit them with desks and chalkboards and even laptops for the teachers and some of the students. And we hope to bring, build fully furnished classrooms from the ground up um, in these areas that desperately need them like yours. And that's a project that I've been developing for the past year. And we would really like to get in place within the next 12 to 24 months. I know that for those children in need of education now, waiting a year or two is very difficult, but SECO is trying to do a lot of things at once on a very limited amount of funding, but I promise that project is coming. And for all of you in other regions, just know that within the next few years, we will be building classrooms from the ground up in areas that have no educational facilities. Okay, if I, if I may come in, for the immediate ones now, based on what we have on the in the container with Ajay has identified, we can take care of what she's asking for now. We can, we can get some, some, some computers with Ajay and then the schools, some of the schools that she mentioned that is exactly 150,000 and above, those are the schools Ajay was, was pointing out that they are going to have the central area where they meet on Wednesday to identify. So that Wednesday's meeting in Teslim Balogo. Are you listening to me, Shadare? Yeah, but we are in Ogun State. Yes, it will Hello? cover both Ogun State. 
That, and Lagos, yes, it's going to cover uh, Ajayi. Yes, Ajayi said it's about four states. It's going to cover for the okay. meeting. Yes, so okay. I hope is I hope Ajayi is hearing us so that he will exactly say because he had, he identified a certain amount of facilities for that particular project based on the computer the the what we have on ground now, not what we are loading because we have enough for him in Lagos State, Ogun State, and uh, we could do. Okay, so okay. you will work okay. with Ajay in that regard. And then those children, when they meet on Wednesdays, they, Ajay has identified those schools. So he, he has the list. It's a pity he cannot come online so that he will probably say it because he has been speaking with my wife in the last uh, two or three weeks now concerning what you, your concerns now. Okay, if you under, if you under, uh, if you are hearing me very well, I can hear you. On that Wednesday, all the parents and their children should come to Teslim Balogun. No, it's not the parents and their children. It's only the parents will come on test in Teslim Balogun. There will be a notice to that effect. They are going to send out buses to the parents at some point to pick all the parents down. Okay. It's, it's only the parents that will be coming every Wednesday. Okay. That is once Wednesdays, once a month. Okay. So it is the parents that will identify the needs of their kids, of the children. Kids. Okay. Yes. You understand? So parents can come and the teachers and the teachers can equally come as well. So we accommodate okay. the teachers and the parents in Teslim Balogu Stadium Balogu. every first or second week, every Wednesday or Thursday, Mr. Ajayi will be the one to identify to say this is a particular day, okay? After he has consulted with the parents, oh, so you will decide and, and tell Seko, because we are working in collaboration with you people. So you are on ground. Okay. You will tell us what we do. All right, sir. But what we have to know okay. is that every facility that you people need will provide it and make sure it is shared equally and no issue if you don't if it's lacking you let us know what jesse is saying is that our long-term feature is to have our own building which has commenced in lucky phase one already wow. that will be completed soon. so you any anybody that is when any every year like in june all of you will come to that lucky phase one my wife and jesse everybody will come and other ambassadors will come in lucky phase one okay once every year yeah. That is the plan. But in the other centers, we we'll make sure we our long our long term program is captured with what you people have in plan. We plan. We cannot work okay. without you. People. That's why we set up this. Yes. So you will be a mouthpiece to explain to other parents what we have in mind. We, we even have our okay. meeting today, self in the morning. We have our meeting today at our own center. We will sit here. I've okay, sent some pictures sure. to Mr. Dai Ajay. I'm doing coordinating. We have, we, there's a lot of things we have in the computer. Like Ajay, next time we will not have. We have. We have telephones. We have phones. We have iPhones. We will give to the major player like you now. You receive some iPhones. You will give to them to give so that next time we are having the meeting, the people that will be will not having this problem. Ajay, just yes. for last week we sent ten thousand naira to Ajay to fix up his phone. If yeah, yeah, if yeah. he has a new phone, yep. will, there won't be there won't be a problem. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, I'm going to uh, I'm going to cut in here. I'm going to wrap this up for us uh, by okay. saying, by building off of that, Patrick just said it perfectly. You guys are you guys are our people on the ground. You guys are the ones we rely on. So Rita had a question just 15 minutes ago. What is her role as an ambassador? As a SECO ambassador, what are you supposed to do? And I think this really just hit it. Patrick really just nailed it. As a SECO ambassador, it is your responsibility to identify the needs in your community for the special populations. Think about what solutions could be brought to help those needs. Think about what organizations are going to need partnered with in your areas and what SECO personally can bring from our end. Let 
us know those needs in your areas and then be the coordinator for us to get those resources there. That is the job of a SECO ambassador. Thank you so much, Dr. Jesse. And all of you who are involved in doing that, we thank you immensely. And Do you have any closing word from the president? I think uh, Tian Ukweze is on the line. Do we have Tian in here? We do. Tian, can you hear us? Any closing notes from you? Hello? Nope, she must be in the middle of her walk. <laughs> yes. So, okay. but she, uh, she wished she could be here with us, but she's out collaborating with another partner organization and opening up another avenue for us. And every collaboration we can get is going to help immensely. And we will always keep you guys abreast of everything in the WhatsApp group chat and through personal communications with each of you regarding your individual areas. And we're going to probably not have another ambassador training session like today until July or August, because if we did one at the end of May, it would be pointless because we're doing an event in Lagos at the beginning of June. So we will see you, most of you, I hope, in person there. And then we will be spending three weeks there on the ground coordinating with all of you as well as we can putting on events for parents and uh caregivers and hosting at least uh one seminar in each city of lagos and abuja and we will have an event for special needs individuals and children and orphans to come and play carnival games and just have a great day and invite the general public to interact with them because we need to start breaking down the social barriers. It's not normal people and stupid people. It's just people. And the more we can get them to interact, the better. And our major event this June is going to focus on that while we run workshops on the sides for all of you and for parents and caregivers. And then uh, we will see how much information we get covered at those seminars and meetings. And then when we come back at the end of the summer, we will resume monthly trainings and meetings such as today's. And always, always, always stay in contact during the week. Um, and we just went over your role as ambassadors. So please, please, please bring us your concerns and let us know what we can do for your communities along the way. And I think we've hit everything we needed to hit today and more. We've had some great questions. We've had some great comments. And I think we're going to wrap it up now and see you all in Nigeria in about five weeks. Awesome, guys. Thank you. Beautiful training. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Laura. Laura Jeremy, from Las Vegas, I'm on board. You guys did amazing. Anything, you, I'm, I would like to do the girl stuff. So anything with the girls, gender specific stuff, please count me in, um, madam and, 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 and Prince. Anything y'all need, I'm here for you. Absolutely. Laura, um, go ahead and get in personal contact with myself and Tian about uh, starting up the... Uh, the girls outreach and the uh and the girls specific uh trainings and get in contact with uh, rita ophili okay yes rita as well 
Rita is very active on social media, Laura. Okay. 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 Madam, Madam R T will send me everything because yep. me and Madam T is going to meet about funding and creating um, some funds so we can create a world to start funding this. Um, through just wellness. So we're going to do some great things with Seiko and we're going to start spreading the world so we can start having our people on the ground. We need board members to be disabled. We have them. No problem. We'll get them on the table here in the U.S. and we'll have them in June. Excellent. Thank you, Laura. They, they will love you in Nigeria. They're expecting you. They're very warm people in Nigeria. It's one of my things is to make Seiko one of the best in Nigeria and in the U.S. Because what you're doing in Nigeria needs to be do done here as well. So we're going to adopt the community here, start working with the community here, start getting some, some disabled people on the board so they can share the heart of being disabled in the U.S. with the heart of the people in Nigeria. So let's go, y'all. Madam T is working on their Beautiful. visas. Madam T, Madam T is working on their visas to come for the event. Anyway, Kemi, what do you have to say, Kemi, for a second, please, Kemi? Okay, nice, um, nice presentation. Great, great, great. Um, speechless. Let's just, I believe more in action, actually. So that's why I've been very quiet. And so fingers crossed and yeah, hope for the best. The, the person yes, talking action, to you, we will show the you person action. talking to you, Jesse has been to Nigeria, all the way from Las Vegas. He traveled all the way. He came to Nigeria and stayed in Lekki in Lagos. Is, does, that prove to you, eh? does that prove to you somebody curious <laughs> or not? I actually know when you guys came so that I know a bit about circles. So uh, uh, like I said, I'm a person with visual impairment. So all the stain to an extent, I know a bit of it. But let's see how it goes, OK? Okay, nice. Let's try, try your yeah, best sure. to give encouragement the way you can, okay? No problem. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you all. Thank you, guys. Great job.